What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country, in Washington, D.C., and everything you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, stimulus check update, and daily news. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to subscribe right now. It's completely free to do so, so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember those times so you don't miss out on new videos. Also, thanks so much for hitting the like button for us down below. You guys are amazing. Queen Elizabeth has confirmed that she has tested positive for the virus and she is experiencing mild cold like symptoms buckingham palace said she is 95 years old and will continue with light duties at windsor castle over the coming week wow she will continue to receive medical attention and will follow all the appropriate guidelines they did say the queen has received three doses of the vaccine both her eldest son, Prince Charles, and her daughter-in-law, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, have also recently contracted the virus. Charles has since returned to work. So yeah, our thoughts and prayers go out to Queen Elizabeth, and, you know, she's 95 years old, so, um, you know, she is uh, definitely at risk here. Um, as well as our thoughts and prayers go out to anybody still dealing with this virus. Of course, uh, we know that uh, deaths right now are still at near an all-time high and are rising in 14 states right now. Um, so again, please say, uh, be safe out there, and my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody. Russia yesterday launched a nuclear exercise in a show of a military strength. Yeah, they launched multiple nuclear exercises comprised of multiple hypersonic missiles in an effort to display its military strength. The move comes amid mounting fears from the U.S., Canada, and European allies that Russia is on the brink of invading Ukraine. The Kremlin's website features photos of Russian President Putin overseeing the operation alongside Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko. Russia military commanders were also present during the exercise, Washington Post reports. The Kremlin also says that Saturday the exercise included warships and submarines, which launched caliber cruise missiles and hypersonic missiles as well. Russian military commanders reportedly told Putin that the, quote, massive drill was conducted in order to indicate that the country is capable of defeating an enemy, the Post reported. Also, the U.S. Uh, now says that they officially have intel that the Russian troops now have orders to invade Ukraine. U.S. intelligence received information saying that the Russian military commanders have, have been given orders to proceed with an invasion of Ukraine. Now that the Olympics ended here today, quote, they're, they're doing everything that American commanders would do once they got the orders to proceed. Wow. Quote, the intelligence says that Russian troops have actually received orders now to proceed with the invasion. So not only are they moving up closer and closer to the border and into these attack positions, but the commanders on the grounds are making specific plans for how they would maneuver into their sectors on the battlefield. Here is U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. With what you just heard Clarissa reporting on, uh, learning that troops from Russia and Belarus will continue those joint exercises there past their planned end date. What does that tell you? Does it make you more concerned about an invasion? Uh, it does, and it, uh, it tells us that the playbook that we laid out, I laid out at the UN Security Council last week about uh, Russia trying to create a, a series of, of provocations as justifications for aggression against Ukraine uh, is, is going forward. We've seen that over the last few days. Now they're justifying the continuation of exercises and so exercises in quotation marks that they said would end now, the continuation indefinitely of those quote unquote exercises on the situation in eastern Ukraine, a situation that they've created uh, by uh, continuing to ramp up tensions. Meanwhile, 
Uh, they've been escalating uh, the forces they have across uh, Ukraine's borders uh, over the last months, from 50,000 forces to 100,000 to now more than 150,000. So all of this, along with the false flag operations we've seen unfold over the weekend, uh, tells us that the playbook that we laid out uh, is moving forward. So you mentioned the false flag uh, operation. You have that. You also have, as Clarissa talked about, a kindergarten hit by a shell. Uh, and you have a cyber attack that's already happened. Ukraine is reporting dozens of ceasefire violations. Is Russia's plan to invade already in motion? It, uh, as we've described it, uh, everything leading up to the, the actual invasion appears to be taking place. Uh, all of these false flag operations, all of these provocations, uh, to create justifications. All of that is already in train. But you heard President Biden say this the other night. Um, we believe President Putin has made the decision. But until uh, the tanks are actually rolling and the, and the, the planes are flying, uh, we will use every opportunity and every minute we have uh, to see if uh, diplomacy can still uh, dissuade uh, President Putin from carrying this forward. Uh, President Biden is uh, prepared to engage uh, President Putin at any time, in any format, if that can help prevent a war. Um, I reached out to my Russian counterpart, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, uh, to urge that we meet uh, next week in Europe. The plan is still to, to do that, unless Russia invades in the meantime. Uh, meanwhile, the Ukrainian president is pressing for preemptive sanctions against Russia now because of the actions that have already taken place. They're pressing uh, for sanctions already. Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky said, quote, what are you waiting for? You're telling me that it's 100% that the war will start in a couple of days. Then what are you waiting for? Ukrainian leader asked, CBS, uh, asked and CBS News reported, quote, we don't need your sanctions after the bombardment will happen and after our country will be fired at or after we'll, be, we'll have no borders or after we will have no economy or parts of our country will be occupied. Why would we need those sanctions then? He continued, Vice President Kamala Harris said, I think it was yesterday, let me be clear, I can say with absolute certainty, if Russia further invades Ukraine, the United States, together with our allies and partners, will impose significant and unprecedented economic costs and sanctions. The thing about doing sanctions before they actually invade is that's a tricky situation because then Russia could say, well, we're considering diplomacy. Or what if what if we were going to do diplomacy? Or what if we we're thinking about, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and then they also can say, well, we haven't actually invaded. So, you know, that's a that's a tricky situation. We have had the shelling incidents. So and we did have the cyber hacks. So they could do some in uh, because of those. You can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Do you think that they should do some preemptive sanctions? Uh, maybe not full-on sanctions, but they could do some because of those two incidences. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Do you think they should maybe send a message, a message to Putin uh, in uh, retaliation because of that and send a message saying, hey, uh, if you continue on with this stuff, um, more will happen. Meanwhile, Senator Bernie Sanders takes a, quote, thinly veiled swipe at Senator Joe Manchin. Uh, both Democrats, well, well, Bernie Sanders is uh, technically an independent slash Democrat, uh, for siding with the GOP, the Republicans, and opposing the child tax credit checks. Although Joe Manchin has said that he has always been in favor of the child tax credit checks, but he wants them to have certain conditions like income requirements and um, income thresholds. So um, those are still on the table here, but here's what Senator Bernie Sanders has to say. Senator Bernie Sanders said on Twitter that ending monthly checks to families was, quote, morally obscene after new research illustrated that just how many children fell into poverty as payments dried up. In December, families across the country stopped receiving up to $300 monthly child tax credit checks per kid. Mon money that had been a godsend for some parents receiving them. The IRS said that over 36 million families 
which is about 60 million children, received about $16 billion in the last batch of payments on December 15th. The January 15th payment and the February 15th payments did not go out, largely in part, or almost entirely in part, because Senator Joe Manchin did not sign on to it, did not give his approval for the vote. Sanders cited a new analysis from the Center of Poverty and Social Policy at Columbia University, which found that 3.7 million kids slid back into poverty with the child tax credits expiration. Child poverty rose to 17% in January compared to 12% in December, a 41% increase that brought it back in line with 2020 levels. The researchers found that Latino and black children saw the largest rises in poverty, a 41% increase in just a month or two. Wow, sad. Bernie slams Democrats and Republicans alike here. He says, how did this happen? 50 Republicans and one corporate Democrat allowed the $300 a month child tax credit to expire. This is morally obscene. Joe Manchin has said he wants only the working parents to receive the child tax credit, making the poorest parents ineligible and people on disability and people that are disabled and even grandmas and grandpas, uh, people that are on uh, Social Security and raise the children and potentially already worked for 30 or 40 years but are now retired. He's been skeptical of sending direct payments without conditions and privately raised concerns about parents spending the cash aid on drugs. His office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Stormy Johnson, a single mother from Joe Manchin's home state of West Virginia, told insider Aaron Snodgrass that she was heartbroken over losing the payments. She says, quote, without these payments, I won't eat so my kids can. Yeah, that's sad. Democratic Representative AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, very outspoken member of Congress, uh, says, quote, one U.S. Senator, Joe Manchin, heard stories about people allegedly using the child tax credit, quote, for drugs without any evidence or data to back it up. He then used that as justification to nuke the entire national program, causing millions of kids to fall into poverty for weeks. Horrifying. I mean, honestly, she's right. I mean, you could give somebody $20 on the street and who knows what they're going to do with it. You can't use that. That's like saying that you can give somebody a stimulus check and who knows what they're going to do with it. Should we not give out stimulus checks ever again? Should we not give out child tax credits ever again? Should we not give out SNAP benefits ever again? Because, you know, they could use that for food and then use their food money for whatever. I mean, right? That's like saying you could never give out benefits to anybody ever again because what you don't know what they're going to use the money for. That rational, that rationale is absolutely ludicrous. Absolutely. That's like saying, okay, never help out anybody ever again because who knows what they'll use the money for. That, that rationale is the absolute worst rationale I've ever heard of ever in my life. That's like saying, don't, don't help out poor people. Don't help out people in need because you don't know what they're going to use the money for. They could use it on drugs. I can't even just, it's just absolutely just insane. If you go with that mentality, you don't help out starving children don't help out people in need you can't make this stuff up it's absolutely just insane so meanwhile 60 million children are no longer getting any help now it's sick it's absolutely sick is it not let me know your thoughts in the comments here so i mean you know and then, and then joe manchin you know he gives interviews here you know he, um he gave an interview Couple, couple different interviews where he says, I've always been for the child tax credits. I've always been for them. But, uh, you know, they got to convince him a hundred times to vote for this stuff, right? It's not just the child tax credits. Of course, that's, you know, what we're covering here from this headline. Um, 
But, uh, you know, same thing with the Build Back Better package. There's going to be this new Build Back Better package now that he says that he's, uh, you know, for now. They're going to have to probably rebrand it, rename it. And uh, he wants to, you know, obviously, you know, go through the package and go through the input. He wants to give the his, quote, Republican colleagues a chance to go through it, even though they're probably all going to vote no on it at, at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> you know, it'll be interesting. We'll give the, we'll give the, or he'll give the, all the Republicans a chance to go through it. And then at the end of the day, all the Republicans will vote no on it. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> the Republicans have really been getting kind of blasted here recently, not just from the Democrats, but kind of from the, from, uh, from everybody here recently, because the Republicans have been talking a lot about inflation, inflation, inflation. And when it comes time to vote on inflation and who has the Fed board, they didn't even sh show up to vote. Uh, and what's interesting is the head of the Fed is appointed by former President Donald Trump, Jerome Powell. He's a Republican. And um, he's going to be the one raising interest rates. Biden actually decided to keep him on. He's done a pretty good job. Um, a lot of Democrats said, don't keep him on. They wanted to put a Democrat in there. Um, so surprisingly, Biden kept him on. He's done a pretty, pretty decent job. Um, but, you know, Democrats wanted to put a Democrat in there. Biden decided to keep him on. And all the Republicans didn't even show up to the hearing which is kind of strange. You would think that they would show up to, you know, appoint the Republican in there, show support for their Republican <laughs> head of the Fed. It's, it's kind of a strange um, thing to kind of abstain from. It's not like it's a Democrat that they're abstaining from and showing like a blockade from. It's, it's kind of weird, kind of weird. Um, I, I don't really even understand this one per se. Um, you, you let me know if you understand this one. Um, like I said, he's a Republican. He was appointed by former President Donald Trump. And you would think that I, maybe they just don't want to show support for him because they don't want to have anything to do with the potential inflation. I, I don't know can't even figure this one out um but you know the, it's weird because it's like if you're a republican i know you want to like blame all the inflation on the democrats biden i get it you always want to blame the other party but like former president donald trump his first stimulus package alone was 2.3 trillion dollars biden's stimulus package was 1.9 trillion trump spent more money on just his first stimulus package, then Biden's stimulus package. Biden's only passed the one stimulus package. Trump spent more money on just the one, and you know Trump had those two major stimulus packages. I mean, if if anybody just does the math, that Trump spent more money on stimulus and sent out two stimulus checks, and Biden only sent out one. So if anything, Biden has some catching up to do with supporting the people and actually spending money for stimulus. Um, I, of course the Republicans don't want to, you know, bring that to light. You know, they, I, I get the whole political games and things in Congress is always blame the other party. Democrats did the same thing. Don't get me wrong. When Republicans were in control and Trump was president and, um, Republicans were in control of the house, the Senate and the presidency, which wasn't that long ago, 2017 and 2018, uh, when Republicans used the reconciliation card and they passed, um, the 2017 Trump tax cuts without the Democrats. Democrats did the same thing as well. You blame everything on the Republicans. So I get it. Both sides do it. Uh, it's just kind of strange that that's how Congress works. Just don't vote for anything. Blame the other party. It's actually kind of sad that that's the way, that, the way that our system works. Uh, it's almost kind of like we need a third party. I mean, I know we have the independent party, but it, honestly, it's really not existent. If you see, like even Bernie Sanders, he's an independent per se, but I mean, he re, he's really a, a Democrat. He always votes with the Democrats. Um, 
and, and the amount of independence that we have are like less than 1%, maybe 1% of them. And they either vote, de you know, Democrat or Republican. There's not, a, and there's not even enough of them to make a third party. So, and the problem is, is it's just too, there's just not enough of them to make a difference. Maybe that, that needs to change here in the future. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos. So the YouTube algorithm shows you our videos and you know you you know get a chance to even watch them. Uh, subscribing is completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget those times and make sure to tune in every day so uh, you can watch us here on YouTube. Uh, you can click here to watch my newest video next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.